she laid her little hand on the womb and just prayed that baby, it was uh, Karen's baby, uh, to turn around. And uh, the next day I got an excited call from my friend saying, the baby's turned and I don't know how because I never woke up. Uh, I mean, I never felt it. And you, uh, anyone that has carried a baby for nine months knows that you can't have that baby turn without noticing it huh? without noticing it and without actually having some discomfort without having some other way of determining that that child yeah. is happy. maybe that's part two of the miracle is she didn't feel the uh, trauma yeah, exactly. of the baby because it is maybe. about that person and, and that yeah. baby yeah but the, my two-year-old got to experience that and she was pretty well, maybe, excited and I, maybe I, she I, was more qualified to do that miracle because she had only been two years out of the womb. So she was more familiar with womb <laughs> life. <laughs> or Yeah, maybe. Who, who knows? I think the Lord just wanted to show, demonstrate his yeah. power. Yeah. And his love. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you uh, use the example of the piano player. Our problem is we want to play it perfect. In one right time, we want, we exactly. want to play it perfect and nothing else in life works that way. Well, why, why would spiritual gifts work that way? Uh, you have to do them. In, a disciple is a learner. It doesn't mean they've got it down. It just means they've committed to learning. And I love uh, the Gospels because the disciples are constantly sticking their feet in their mouth, constantly making mistakes. Uh, why couldn't we cast it out? Um, uh, hey, by the way, you know, when you come in power, can we have the second and third position? I mean, they just they they had they were such a work in progress. I like the baseball analogy because. You know, the best baseball player in history, Ted Williams, had a career average of over 400. That wasn't Babe so, Ruth? <laughs> he had the most home runs for qu quite a while. Oh. But I, I think it was um, uh, Ted Williams. Uh, his, his batting average was like 403 for a lifetime. So that means he got a hit four out of ten times, which is less than half. Um, you know, if I can get a hit one out of ten times with, with healing – yeah. I mean, it would probably go to our heads and we would we would suddenly think we would proclaim ourselves as the owners of healing or something. And so maybe it's good that it doesn't or maybe God heals people through two year olds so they they don't get big headed about it or something. But And speaks to something about faith, you know, the faith of the person um, either receiving prayer or the faith of the person uh, giving prayer. Yeah, well, my personal experience is the, the best miracles I've seen. Uh, when it comes to healing, the person receiving prayer is the one with all the faith. And, of course, these usually happen in India or other <laughs> countries. Um, and they just think that we've traveled, all, you know, maybe it's a missionary anointing, but they think since we've traveled all the way around the world to pray for them, that they're going to get healed. And, uh, boy, aren't we surprised when, uh, when power is, the gift is given through us and we're just, it's very humbling, actually, because we know that it's not uh, that it really is more about their faith than ours. But uh, it seems like faith has to be present somewhere. I think sometimes the only one with faith is the Lord, where we just try something desperate, and even even the recipient is just in an act of desperation. And and uh, you know, uh, Jesus says uh, one translation one translation has Jesus saying, "Have faith in God," but a better translation from the original is have the faith of God. Um, uh, the delineation being God is never faithless. You know, uh, we can deny him, but he never denies himself. And so uh, we don't have to drum up faith. I don't know how to drum up faith anyway. I, th I think maybe when we're moving in love, then we're willing to pray for somebody. Or if they're crying out to God out of desperation, they're willing to get prayer. And then, um, and then, and uh, God, God comes and does it, and why He does it sometimes and doesn't do it others, no idea. No idea. Um, tell us some of the spiritual gifts that you've seen. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, if there's 25 gifts, ish, I, the list I have here, and I'm showing it on the camera, uh, is one I threw together for a, a teaching we did. Uh, list 23 of them. Uh, you can tell I did it because I left, I was looking for where healing was and healing is not even on the list. So apparently I, uh, when I copied it, I missed, missed probably a few, but, um, of the 20 or 25, um, 
r- roughly a third of them have no uh, a direct correlation with our words. And I've got things like um, our deeds or uh, service or uh, martyrdom or miracles, uh, celibacy. Many would not consider that a gift. I guess that's the fourth, the fifth, if you count that gift mentioned in First Corinthians 7, maybe that's the fifth place in scripture where they're listed. Uh, you have another third of them that uh, aren't directly connected to words, but they're usually uh, implemented through our words. Uh, gifts like um, discerning of spirits that I mentioned. It seems like when you say what you see, that seems to activate uh, or like they're ready to scram when that happens or it activates faith in the recipient. Um, empathy. You don't need words to feel empathy, but when you express words from a heart of empathy or mercy, then that's often when the gift is received. Um, I remember one time um, I was grieving because of something that had happened to a family member. And I remember you looking at me and just your eyes communicated empathy. And, um, and, and so I received that gift from God through you without, without a word. It was what was in your eyes. Um, hospitality, that's just making room for people, but often uh, there are words associated with that. Um, would you like a cup of coffee or uh, would you guys like to come over for the Bronco game or whatever? Uh, then you have roughly half of the list, which is gifts that you cannot exercise these gifts apart from your mouth. <laughs> and I guess this is maybe why Peter delineates you know, the two categories. And if there's two, then it does seem like roughly half of them our verbal, our verbal gifts, and and um, and half or not is gifts like encouragement, uh, or evangelism, uh, or prophesying, um, or tongues, or interpreting of tongues, teaching, uh, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. The fact that the word word is in there indicates that it's something that's communicated with our mouth, and so um, it's kind of an adventure to use your mouth, use words. Uh, to uh, express spiritual gifts. Are you ready, Boo? Start walking. <laughs>